water. It is the lifeblood of every organism. Water. It is a pure, colorless substance which covers 70% of the earth. Water. It is that which keeps us clean and healthy. Water is a metaphor for many things in many cultures. Living, cleanliness, washing away of sins, and so on and so forth. Water's essentiality for life cannot be questioned. But sadly, in the modern world, despite its tremendous value and uses, it has been compromised in many parts of the world. Most of these areas are impoverished areas where people are not knowledgeable about cleanliness or are simply unable to buy bottled water due to price or lack of quantity. Despite the fact that access to clean drinking water is a human right, 878 million people around the world don't have access to clean purified water. This means that they have to depend on whatever water they have around them. Our team lives in India, a country known for slums and poverty. Knowing this, we decided to make a film about water pollution. Our first step was to investigate the quality of water in local rivers. We took water samples from a local river, pond by our school, and drinking water from our school to investigate the pollution of water. When we went to the Mula Mutha River, the surrounding area was filled with trash and there was a slum nearby. After collecting one liter of water from water bodies, from the water bodies, we proceeded to get the Minus Lake sample. Both samples looked disgusting and definitely seemed unfit to drink. Using our new samples, we proceeded to test their purity. We headed off to the lab to receive further instructions from the chemistry lab teacher. We investigated the hardness, pH, dissolved oxygen, total dissolved solids, and bacterial growth in the solution. For the hardness test, we used ETDA solution, buffer solution, EBT, a pipe, and beakers. We found that the Mula Mutha sample was the hardest to contain the mo most minerals at 240 ppm, followed by Manus Lake at 170 ppm, and then lastly drinking water at 78 ppm. So far, Despite the obvious impurities in the water, every sample seemed fit to drink. Next, we tested the pH of the water using a pH monitor. Surprisingly, each sample had the normal pH of drinking water. At 7.5 for Mula Mutha, 7.1 for Manus Lake, and 7.7 .7 for drinking water. While doing all these tests, we also put a small amount of each of the samples in petri dishes and kept them away for 48 hours. Meanwhile, we kept evaluating all the other factors. We used another monitor to measure the oxygen content of the water. Mula Mutas stood out from the others with an oxygen content of just 1.4 mg per liter compared to 5.3 mg per liter for Manus Lake and 5.6 mg per liter for drinking water. This was likely because of the movement of the river reducing the amount of oxygen that could dissolve in the water. But these last two tests were the most valuable. The TDS, Total Dissolved Solids, monitor was perhaps the most insightful in terms of actual pollution levels. A TDS of above 60 ppm meant that the water was unsafe to drink. Our sample of drinking water had a minuscule TDS level of 9 ppm, likely caused by any minerals or other particles that could have entered the water on the way to the lab. Manus Lake was unsafe for human consumption at a TDS level of 87 ppm, but that seemed safe enough for other creatures around the area, such as the nearby swans, to live in. But the worst case of pollution was the Mula Mutha sample at an astounding TDS level of 242 ppm. No wonder there was no life present in the area. 
After 48 hours, the Petri dishes were all ready to go. When we received the dishes, both the Mula Mutat and Modest Lake samples were filled with bacteria. Surprisingly, even the drinking water contained some bacteria, but nowhere nearly as much as either of the large water bodies. Now that we knew what the pollution levels were, we wanted to speak with an expert about how the water was purified. We decided to meet, meet up with the Hindavadi Water Treatment Plant in order to get to know how water was purified. Legally, we weren't allowed to film here, but luckily an official let us use a phone to film the area. We also interviewed him, asking him questions related to water purification. Here's the translation. Today, we are here to the MIDC Hajwari Water Treatment Plant to investigate how these people purify water. And today, we are going to talk to Amul Sir. We are at the Hindavadi Water Treatment Plant. This is a water water source is water source is river. We are pump this water is lifted to the Hindiwadi plant from an 8 km long pipe. After coming to the plant, it first goes into the addition fountain and the flash mixer where chemical dosing takes place. This is where chemicals such as PAS and allen chemicals are added. After the dosing, the water enters the CLF where sedimentation of water takes place. After that, the settled water enters the filter house where filtration takes place. Then the remaining bacteria from the water are killed in the chlorine contact room. It is stored in the pure water store, which has a capacity of 600,000 liters, from which it is shared to other areas for use. Which areas do you supply water to? We supply water to the Hindiwadi village, that village, and the other industrial areas around. Okay, so what are the constituents of the water source? What pH does it have? And what is the TDS? The pH of the water source is 7. And the TDS? The TDS is not that much. The TDS is not much as the water is river water. And the bacteria are there in the water, but we treat them here. So, are you going to make any improvements in your plan? So more water is supplied to us? More pure water is supplied to us? Yes, before we had regular sand holes, but now we have improved sand holes with the water holes. So how did these help? The old sand holes used to be really old, but the new sand holes of micrometers, so water is filtered more effectively. So how much water do you supply per day? 16 megaliters per day of water per day. After the enlightening experience, we thanked the man and headed off with new knowledge that would help us with solutions from water pollution. In regards to solutions, we had two options. We could look for cheaper alternatives for water pollution or we could deal with the problem at its source. Considering that solutions for purifying water were already available in the market and preferring to use Eastern influences, we decided that prevention is best. Now, we had to decide on solutions. In India, plastic is relatively new. Even if you look at India in the 1980s, there wasn't much plastic. But in 2018, plastic seems to fill every corner of every major city. Despite initiatives such as Swachh Bharat Abhyan, Clean India Campaign, 
waste is being disposed anywhere and everywhere. What's especially sad is the prevalence of plastic in Indian waters. Water, once fit to drink, is now devoid of any form of life, aside from the occasional algae. Companies definitely play a big part in the pollution of waterways. But here in India, it seems like the biggest contributor to pollution is normal residents. Education seems like an obvious solution to the problem, but it would face some hurdles. In Hinduism, there are some old ideas talking about how ashes of the dead should be dumped into rivers. Some people might view this education as going against their religion. There is also a perception within India that any area outside the homes of Hindus is not their concern. However, if people were made aware not just of the fact that they are throwing a plastic bag, but that the overall culmination of the entire society's trash is disastrous for the environment, the economy, and everyone's health, a lot more people would be a lot more conscious. Pollution has become a societal norm. If other old societal norms can be changed, we're sure pollution can be too. Our solution of specific education deals with personal, cultural, and societal norms. We hope this video makes you more conscious of water contamination and maybe even inspires you to take action yourself. We hope one day everyone will realize that a minute of inconvenience is truly worth it for the environment and for ourselves. Thank you.